Hello and good morning. This is an introduction to computers. I'm John. I'll be taking you through this tutorial. The objectives are understanding what is a computer, know the different parts of a computer, know the different types of computers, get to know how to start and shut down a computer, differentiate between data and information, know what are computer viruses and how they work, know and differentiate the different types of computer components. This is just but a, uh, a short list of the objectives that will be uh, required to meet at the end of this tutorial. So let's get started. First of all, we are going to start with the definition of a computer. So how can you define a computer? Basically, a computer is an electronic device uh, that has uh, the power to manipulate uh, data into information. So it usually has uh, installed programs uh, that will now help in this manipulation of data. This device will also have its own memory that will be used to store the data while it is being processed. So basically, if you are required to define a computer, you can uh, call it an electronic device that will work under the control of programs stored in its own memory. You can also as well define it as an electronic machine that processes low data to give information as output. We'll be understanding what is data and what is information as we move on. As well, we'll also be understanding what is output and what is input and what is required. A computer automatically accepts data and instruction as input from an input device. It stores them temporarily in its memory, then processes that data according to the instructions given and finally transfers the processed data to an output device. So you can ask yourself, uh, why are we calling a computer an electronic device? And this is the reason. We shall describe a computer as an electronic device because it is made up of electronic components that uses elect electric energy, such as electricity, to operate. So what does that mean? that this device can't operate without uh, continuous electric energy. So uh, the source can be electricity or any other. So for that simple reason, uh, we call a computer an electronic device. This computer usually has internal memory uh, which stores data and instructions temporarily awaiting processing and even holds the intermediate results or information before it is communicated to recipients through the output devices. So what are we seeing here? That for a computer to operate, uh, it again requires uh, internal memory uh, that will be used to uh, temporarily, that is for a short time, uh, hold data when it is being, uh, while it is awaiting processing and when it is awaiting output, that is before we see it on our screen, uh, sometimes it is required to be uh, temporarily stored in a certain memory. We'll be talking about these different types of memory as we continue. It works on the data using the instructions issued. Uh, that means uh, the computer cannot do any useful job on its own. It can only work as per the set of instructions issued. So when a computer is sitting alone somewhere, it cannot do anything unless it is instructed to do that. So uh, as we continue, we are going to see the different uh, components of a computer. 
and uh, we are going to see that a user is a, a one of uh, the computer component because uh, he will be required or she will be required to issue instructions to a computer so it can be able to um, do in a useful job a computer will accept data in one form and produce it in another form the data is normally held within the computer as it is being uh, processed as we have said uh, thereafter uh, that uh, the computer has that uh, uh, ability uh, to uh, hold data uh, within it uh, when it's being processed and even after processing uh, uh, maybe to just carry out some various activities so again let's now try to understand what is a computer program these are terms that will be coming across uh, severally and it's good that we understand what it is so that uh, we are good to go so a computer program is usually a set of related instructions written uh, in one of the computer uh, computer's language and it is used to make the computer perform a specific task or to direct the computer on what to do so as i've said before uh, a computer usually works under the control of programs these programs are usually instructions uh, that are stored or held within the computer and uh, we usually find that these uh, programs are usually written in one of the computer's languages um, if you uh, continue uh, with your IT uh, program you'll find that uh, we usually have different computer languages that can be used and mostly the ones that are used to write uh, computer programs uh, we usually call them uh, structured programming languages uh, for instance we have C, we have C++ and all that that's just an example so uh, basically uh, a computer program is just a set of instructions written in one of the computer's language and uh, uh, they usually help the computer to perform any given uh, task that is a specific task for that case so you can also define it as a set of related instructions uh, which specify how the data is to be processed also it can be defined as a set of instructions that usually act like a guide uh, through the process uh, of uh, a computer or uh, through uh, or helping it to uh, carry out the various activities so a set of instructions are used to guide a computer through a process so it can be any uh, given process again uh, we uh, have another term here that we will also be using uh, more often that is uh, data and uh, data is basically the low facts that can be accepted by a computer so they can be figures uh, they can be uh, uh, they can be alphabets they can be anything that uh, the computer has the ability of uh, accepting and uh, manipulating it to something useful so data may be in form of numbers as i've said alphabets or letters or symbols and can be processed to produce information So having understood that, uh, we can now go ahead and look at the different types of data. And mainly we usually have two types uh, of forms of data. Uh, we have digital or district data. Uh, we also have analog uh, or continuous uh, data. So we are going to start with the digital data and understand what it is. And digital data is usually district in nature so what does that mean this data is usually represented in form of numbers alphabets or symbols for it to be processed by a computer so any uh, data any low facts that are in form of numbers alphabets symbols 
uh, we usually categorize it as uh, digital data or we usually uh, place it in that form of data that we call digital data so digital data is obtained by counting e.g. you can you know one two three uh, you know a b c b all that is uh, digital data so what is analog data on the other hand analog data is continuous in nature so we've seen that uh, digital data is distinct in nature while analog data is continuous in nature and uh, that means it is represented in physical nature in order to be processed by a computer so uh, analog data is obtained by uh, measurement uh, that is uh, when you're measuring pressure you're measuring temperature you're measuring humidity you're measuring the length or the current of uh, anything so that one we usually call it um, analog data so like the information that you are obtaining or getting uh, we usually call it uh, analog data so the output is in form of uh, smooth graphs from which the data can be led so uh, as we look at the different types of uh, computers uh, we are going to see uh, the computers that usually handle uh, the analog data and we are going to see that most of uh, actually not most of the time but always uh, the output the output is in form of uh, graphs so uh, the information will not be represented in uh, numbers or, or letters so you're just going to read a graph and understand what uh, the output is so um, data processing now that you've understood what is data and uh, the different types of data so we can look at how data is processed and um, data processing it is the process of collecting all items of data together and converting them into information so that's basically how you can define uh, data processing that process of collecting all items of data together and uh, converting them into useful uh, information you can also define it as uh, uh, the way data is manipulated or the way data is changed or handled uh, to turn it into information the processing may involve calculation comparison or any other logic to produce the required result so the processing of the data usually results in some meaningful information being produced and that is the main purpose of a computer so any electronic device that can be able to handle data uh, and turn it into something useful uh, that is a computer uh, component information so let's try to understand what information is and information is the data which has been refined summarized manipulated in the way you want all into a more meaningful form for decision making the information must be accurate timely complete and relevant so uh, and this is one of the advantages of uh, using computers or while undertaking any task so a computer will have the ability uh, to uh, refine uh, data and uh, give you uh, calculate timely complete and relevant information but this again will depend on the data given and uh, uh, also how the data is fed so you don't assume that you'll give a computer long data and then it will give you accurate data so there's something we usually call garbage in garbage out so if you give it garbage it will give you garbage so if you give it the correct uh, data then it will give you accurate uh, complete and relevant uh, information thereafter so let's try to compare between uh, data and information uh, so that you're not uh, confused between the two so uh, comparison between data and information so we usually, we have a table here uh, that i have uh, created so just trying to 
help you understand the uh, comparison between the two and uh, the comparisons are self-explanatory so like we have data being unprocessed uh, facts or figures while information is the end products of data uh, data is usually not alleged uh, while information is alleged into a meaningful format uh, data does not have much meaning to the user while information is more meaningful to the user actually it will help in decision making yeah cannot be used for decision making uh, that is data while information can be used to make decisions so uh, those are just but a few comparisons uh, between uh, data and information uh, characteristics or features of a computer so we usually have various uh, characteristics or a computer usually have various characteristics so we are just going to look or discuss just but a few so the ones that we are going to discuss include speed accuracy reliability consistency storage diligence automation versatile and impo uh, imposition of a formal approach to working methods so before the 20th century, most information was processed manually or by use of simple, uh, simple machines. Today, millions of people are using computers in offices and at home to produce and store uh, types of information. So the following are some of uh, the attributes that make computers widely accepted and used in today. Uh, activities in our society so starting with speed uh, computers usually operate at very high speeds and can be used to perform many functions within a very short time so if there is that task that you want to complete within the shortest time possible uh, you can uh, uh, use a computer just help you in accomplishing that the other one is uh, accuracy and unlike human beings uh, computers are very accurate that is they never make mistakes but again remember the garbage in garbage out so always make sure that you give it the correct uh, information so that you accept uh, all you expect to get accurate information so a computer can work for very long periods without going wrong however when an error occurs the computer has a number of input self-checking features in the electronic components that can detect and correct such errors usually errors are committed by the users entering the data to the computer thus the saying uh, garbage in garbage out so this means that if you enter incorrect data the computer have to process it and it will give you the wrong data so the computer will give you misleading information at the end of the day uh, the other uh, feature of a computer is reliability so the computer can be relied upon to produce the correct answer if it is given the correct instruction and supplied with the correct uh, data Therefore, if you want to add two numbers, but by mistake you give a computer uh, a multiply instruction, the computer will not know that you intended to add, so it will multiply the numbers supplied. So you see in that case, you've given it the correct uh, numbers maybe, but you've again went ahead and uh, issued the wrong instruction. So uh, in that case, uh, it will just give you that. So always ensure that you are also accurate on your side so that the computer will also give you accurate information. Consistency uh, is another feature and uh, computers usually uh, are very consistent. Uh, that means uh, given the same data and the same instructions, they will produce the same answer every time that particular process is repeated. So it's not like a human being maybe who will remember, uh, sorry, who will forget uh, how something was being done. So given the same data and the same instruction, uh, the computer will produce the same thing 
uh, no matter how many times it is repeated. So that's consistency. Storage is another feature, and as we said before, uh, a computer is capable of storing large amounts of data or instructions in a very small uh, space. So a computer uh, can store data and instructions for later use and can produce uh, this data when required so uh, the user can make use of it. Data stored in a computer can be, pro uh, can be protected. Data stored in a computer can be protected from unauthorized individuals through the use of uh, passwords. And nowadays we usually have various security uh, security or well, security systems uh, that you can use uh, just to protect your data another feature is diligence diligence uh, is another uh, computer feature and again unlike us that is human beings a computer can work continuously without getting tired or even bored even if it has to do a million calculations, it will do the last one with the same speed and accuracy as the first one. So this is unlike human beings who will uh, wear out as the days uh, uh, get along or as the day unfolds. So computers will do the same thing uh, a million times without getting tired or even yeah getting bold automation uh, so this is uh, another feature of a computer uh, that is automation and uh, once given the instructions it is guided by these instructions and can carry out on its job automatically until it is complete so uh, for that reason, we say that a computer is an automatic device. That is once, that is because once given the instructions, it is guided by these instructions and can carry out on its job automatically until it is complete. So that is without the intervention of a human being. So it can also perform a variety of jobs as long as there is a well-defined procedure. So like you can give a computer a procedure that is in form of instructions and it will carry out or it will carry on with a certain job uh, even without your intervention. So that is automation. Versatile. So what does that mean? A computer can be used in different places to perform a large number of different jobs depending on the instructions fed to it. So this is uh, to mean that computers are usually used in different places so they are not just limited to offices. You can use a computer at home, you can use a computer in school, you can use a computer in an industry. So you just need to feed it with the correct uh, information. Uh, of course now putting in mind what do you want. Lastly, uh, imposition of a formal approach to working methods. So these are our last uh, computer characteristic that you are going to look at. And just to explain this, uh, because a computer can only work with a strict set of instructions, it identifies and imposes rigid rules for dealing with the data it is given uh, to process. So this is why we go to school, uh, because you cannot just operate a computer. Uh, so for it to be able to give you any accurate output, then you need to follow some rigid uh, rules. You know, it's like some rules that you have to follow. Like you, you can't change. You can't. You can't say that I'm going to uh, do them like this on my own. So you have to follow the set out rigid rules. Uh, uh, for you to be able to use a computer to process any given uh, uh, data uh, so that you get any uh, given uh, uh, output. So this is our last characteristic so that 
uh, is a little bit uh, negative uh, uh, because this will mean that you have to understand what a computer is and how it works and all that but uh, these rules are usually very simple to understand and once followed uh, the process of operating a computer usually is very smooth all right so let's move on to parts of a computer now and a computer is usually uh, a system that is to mean uh, it is not a one device uh, uh, being so it is a, a composition of uh, various devices and uh, these are the devices or these are the parts that we will try to understand uh, at this moment and uh, these devices are usually interconnected together in order to work as a single entity and that's why we usually call a computer a computer system because it is uh, a variety of interconnected uh, devices or parts uh, that usually works as a single entity or as a system a computer consists of the following parts so we have the system unit we have the input devices we have the output devices and we have the storage devices so we will start with uh, the system uh, unit and understand what it is and then we will move on to output and then uh, through output and then to finally uh, storage devices so the system unit system unit is usually just the casing uh, that houses the electronic device or components such as the brain of the computer uh, and the brain of the computer is usually the CPU that is a central processing unit and uh, storage devices among other devices so that uh, that that um, metal being uh, or that metal casing that usually uh, houses the electronic components uh, we usually call it the system unit so it's just that casing that usually uh, uh, you know houses the electronic devices the components in the system unit includes so what will you find uh, within this uh, casing so we have the central processing unit or the CPU which is also referred to as a processor you will find what you call the motherboard uh, you will find a power supply unit you will find memory storage devices you will also find uh, disk drives which are used to store and record uh, data as well as read it among other uh, devices that you're going to find there so types of system units so we usually have two types of system units and the first one is tower system and the second one is uh, desktop system unit so let's start uh, discussing uh, the tower style system and then we move on to uh, the desktop uh, system unit so uh, the tower style system this is just a system unit made to start alone and they are designed to be placed on the floor tower styles units have more space for expansions than the typical desktop units so uh, this to mean that uh, the tower styles are usually a little bit more bigger than the desktop uh, units so if you have a computer and you find that the the the, the, the system unit that casing uh, is bigger than the others then that's what we are referring to the tower system uh, and as we have seen it usually uh, uh, is designed to be placed at the floor but it's not it's not uh, a must you can place it anywhere but the design is in such that it can be placed on the floor and uh, it usually have more space that you can put more uh, uh, expansions you can put more expansion cards and all that b we have the 
desktop system unit uh, and uh, these ones are usually designed to lie on the desk with the monitor resting on top of the system unit and that's why we call it desktop because they are designed to be placed on top of a desk and uh, you can also place the monitor on top of it or just next to it features of the system unit so basically uh, the work of uh, the system unit is housing the various internal computer components it also connects to all peripheral devices using ports it has the computer's power switch so you'll find the computer switch uh, in the system unit and uh, you'll also find the central processing unit uh, which we've said uh, mainly uh, is like the brain of the computer that is it will be used to um, make decisions on what uh, to be done or like all the processing activities uh, are usually done uh, using the uh, the CPU all right so that is one part of a computer system that is uh, the system unit let's move on to the other uh, which is uh, input uh, devices uh, input devices and input devices as the name suggests they are devices that are used to input uh, data or to put data into a computer and uh, they accept data uh, for processing and convert it into a suitable form that the computer can understand so these uh, devices are like uh, the keyboard the mouse joystick right pen scanner etc so let's try to look at each and every one of these uh, because mainly uh, the main examples of uh, uh, input devices are the keyboard and the mouse so we're just going to discuss the two but you have the freedom to just check on uh, the rest uh, types of uh, input devices so the keyboard just looks like a tip lighter uh, and it has letters numbers and other keys through which data is entered into the computer to enter data and instructions into a computer the user should press the required keys so uh, if you have that thing that look like a tape lighter on your computer so it's actually the one that we are calling a keyboard and as you might uh, notice it has a different uh, uh, um, um, keys uh, written different stuff so if you want to enter anything uh, in the computer then you will use those uh, keys by just pressing on them the mouse uh, is actually a pointing device that will enable the user to issue instructions to the computer by controlling a special mouse pointer displayed on the screen so uh, if you have your mouse properly connected to your computer you notice that on the screen we have a pointer uh, that will move in a similar way uh, when you move uh, uh, the mouse the pointer will move in a similar way so it will help you to point on uh, different uh, uh, areas on your screen so we'll be discussing more about uh, the mouse and uh, how it works the other part of a computer is output device and output device again as the name suggests they are used to output uh, now information now the refined data we are going to get it through the output devices and uh, they extract or disseminate processed data uh, from the computer they accept data from processing devices and convert it into human sensible form that is into a form that a, uh, that a human being uh, can understand uh, examples of uh, these uh, uh, devices are screens or monitors printers graph plotters speakers etc so let's try to uh, look at uh, these examples one by one starting with a monitor 
So this basically is a television like screen that is used for display output. When you type a letter or number on the keyboard, it shows up on the monitor. Note that the monitor enables the user to monitor or track or see uh, what is going on in the computer. The other example of an output device is printer and mainly uh, the printers are used to create permanent copies of an output on the paper. Remember what you see on the screen we usually call it um, uh, temporarily uh, uh, data or temporary copy or you can also call it soft copy. Well the ones that is produced by a printer is actually permanent uh, copy or what you also call uh, hard copies. Computer peripherals. So you'll find that uh, as we move along we will be using this term a lot that is a peripheral and a computer peripheral basically is um, any, de any device that will be connected uh, to a computer uh, system uh, using of course uh, cables uh, so you are going to have that device with a cable the cable will have a jack and the jack will uh, connect it to a certain uh, uh, port so a computer is basically made up of system unit and other devices connected to the system unit called peripheral devices Peripheral devices are elements or components connected to the system unit so as to assist the computer satisfy its users. Peripheral devices are connected to system unit using special cables called data interface cables that carry data, programs and information to and from the processor. The cables are connected to the system unit using connectors called ports. Examples now include uh, both the input and output devices, that is speakers, monitors, keyboards, mouse, all that, modems, etc. So uh, those are the different uh, parts of a computer and understanding these uh, different parts of a computer uh, uh, usually places you in a safe uh, side because you'll be able to uh, understand uh, how a computer operates and of course you'll also be able to uh, operate the computer with ease. Classifications of computers, the classifications of computers, so computers can be classified according to the following factors, uh, that is their physical size and processing power, purpose which they are designed, functionality that is mode of operation so we are going to now look at different types uh, of computers in these different uh, classifications so that is starting with uh, physical size and processing power so classification according to physical size Computers can be classified into five main groups according to their physical size. That is, supercomputers, mainframe computers, mini computers, microcomputers, and portable computers. That is, laptops, notebooks, and palm tops. We will start with supercomputers. Supercomputers are the fastest, largest, and most expensive computers. They are also the most powerful computers available. They process information very fast. They can perform many complex calculations in a fraction of a second. Most supercomputers are multiple or have multiple processors. In this case, a single task is sprint among the processors for faster execution. However, all the processors are controlled by a single central processor. So that's why we have uh, the term CPU, the central processing unit, because in supercomputers we have different or we have multiple processors, but these multiple processors are controlled by one main uh, processor that we call uh, CP, 
that is central processor supercomputers generate a lot of heat and therefore require special cooling systems sometimes even uh, the whole cpu is dipped in a tank containing liquid uh, that is a uh, flow carbon flow carbon uh, just to provide cooling supercomputers are very large and heavy and are usually kept at a special uh, environmental conditions that is in a special room so you cannot just place it in your Room. They are operated by a computer specialist. Yeah, so uh, this is because most of the time they are used to perform complex tasks. So they usually require a person who uh, maybe is a, is a specialist in, in, in that specific area. A computer can be operated by over 500 users at the same time so a supercomputer can be accessed or can be operated uh, by over 500 users <laughs> at the same time areas where these computers are used uh, so mainly they are used in complex scientific uh, applications uh, that involves many calculations and require a lot of computation power some of the applications that are used uh, or some of the areas where these uh, supercomputers are used include uh, uh, weather forecasting petroleum research defense and weapon analysis aerodynamic design and simulation but note that the tax use large amounts of data which need to be manipulated with or within a very uh, short time. Examples of supercomputers we have the Cray uh, 3D, we have the NEC 500, just to mention but a few. Mainframe computers uh, is another uh, type of uh, computer uh, according to or classified according to the physical size. Mainframes are less powerful and less expensive than supercomputers. They are big in size but smaller compared to supercomputers. They are also powerful computers with very high capacities of uh, main storage. They also have a large backing storage capacity. So the other type of computer according to uh, physical size we have mini computers and a mini computer is physically smaller than a mainframe however it supports the same peripheral devices supported by a mainframe uh, computer so that is uh, the same uh, uh, components like the mouse like the keyboard like uh, the cpu so uh, a mainframe uh, computer those devices or those components that it uses uh, will also be uh, supported by a mini uh, computer so a mini computer can support several users at the same time e.g. can be operated by six users at a time several workstations or terminals are connected to one central mini computer so that the users connect and share its resources so uh, resources now will include the CPU, uh, we have uh, the storage, uh, that is the memories and all that. So many computers are easier to manufacture and maintain uh, compared to, main, uh, to mainframe computers. They are also cheap than mainframe computers but they are costly uh, than uh, the macro uh, computers. They had a small amounts of data and are less powerful and have less memory than the mainframe computers. Well compared, uh, mini computers are slow than uh, mainframe computers. And uh, areas where mini computers are used uh, include mainly scientific laboratories and research institutions, engineering plants, or factories to control chemicals or um, uh, mechanical processes, space industries, insurance companies, banks, small organizations uh, where they will work as network servers, 
etc 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 examples of mini computers will include uh, the PDP 8 built in 1965 uh, by the digital equipment compilation in US that is the DEC The other type of uh, computer according to physical size is a macro computer or macro computers and uh, <coughs> macro computers are the PCs mostly found these in homes, schools and many small offices. They are called personal computers uh, that is PCs because they are designed to be used by one person at a time, that has the term personal. They consist of very few connected units that is uh, can support very few peripheral devices, uh, usually one or two. The data processing in macro computers is done by a macro processor. So we found that in uh, supercomputers, the processing is done uh, using multiple uh, processors. And um, uh, usually the multiple processors are controlled by one central uh, processor. On the other hand, when we come to uh, mini computers uh, or macro computers, we usually find that uh, they are operated by just one single uh, uh, processor, which we call a macro processor because of its size. So it's usually very small so for that reason we call it uh, a macro so the data processing in macro computers is done by a macro processor that's a single chip containing uh, an arithmetic logic unit and a control uh, unit we'll be talking about these as the lesson advances so macro computers are smaller in size and are cheaper than macro computers they are designed is based on very large scale integration uh, that is a VLSI that confines several physical components into an IC so we usually have this device we call uh, integrated circuit and uh, is actually a very important or a very vital uh, computer component because as you can see it is the it's one that confines or is one that usually uh, holds uh, all the different uh, parts of a macro processor. They are less powerful than mini computers and their internal memory is smaller than that of macro computers. Areas where they are used will include training and learning institutions such as schools. Uh, small businesses, enterprises, communication centers, so where they are used as terminals. And microcomputers have become very common nowadays because of the following reasons. One, they are cheap. Again, uh, they are very fast. They are small in size, hence they occupy less space in office. Are more energy efficient that is they will consume less power they are more reliable than the early mainframe computers examples will include the IBM PCs such as the Apple Macintosh Dell's Compaq, Acer etc lastly we have uh, laptops and notebooks uh, which uh, are types of computers uh, classified according to their physical size and a laptop is usually a PC uh, sufficiently uh, small and light such that a user can use it comfortably on his or her lap. It is designed to be used by placing it on the lap. Laptops are very small in size and are portable. Laptops are small enough to fit inside a briefcase still leaving room for other items. A laptop usually operates mainly on electricity or rechargeable batteries. Normally batteries have an inbuilt normally that is uh, laptops uh, rather 
have an inbuilt disk drives and flat screens that is a LCD liquid crystal display can only support a limited number of peripheral devices have limited storage capacities but note the smaller components like laptops tend to be more expensive than desktop computers because of the following reasons reason number one the technology used in producing a small device is expensive really expensive another reason is that they are convenient because they are portable they have advanced power management capabilities that is uh, they can consume less power since a laptop can operate on rechargeable uh, batteries so you don't have to continuously uh, uh, use it when you connect it to power or while connected to power so you can uh, charge a battery and continue uh, using the battery hence it will save uh, power we also have another type of uh, laptop that we call palm top and they're usually small enough to fit in a pocket can be held in the palm when using it have limited storage capabilities or capacities palm tops mainly are used as personal organizers with calculations word processing spreadsheets and email uh, programs examples of palm tops uh, will include the pda or the commonly known as personal digital assistant Yeah, just to mention uh, but a few desktop computers this is the name given to any computer designed to be used when placed on the desk in an office they are not portable so you cannot move it aloud because they are a little bit bulky examples of desktop uh, computers uh, will include one home computer so this is a, a low-cost microcomputer of limited capability designed for domestic use it has programs that are used typically for computer games or controlling family finances personal computers or pc is another common term so these are macro computer designed for interdependent for independent rather use by an individual at a work or at work or in the home mainly for business purposes so personal computers or PC are usually designed for independent use by an individual at work or in the home mainly uh, for business purposes a PC can support only one user at a time PCs are mostly used in offices, school, businesses, premises, at home for various applications like computer literacy, computer literacy rather, uh, games, database uh, management, accounting, word processing, telecommunication, etc. A PC can be connected to a mini and mainframe computer so as to enable the user access the facilities offered by the larger machines workstation so what is a workstation a workstation is usually a desktop computer with all the facilities but interlinked to a network so uh, it's just but uh, just like any other uh, computer but now this one uh, is interlinked or is usually connected to a network a typical workstation works in a similar way to a personal computer however it is more advanced than a typical pc in the following ways it is large and more powerful than a pc it has inbuilt capabilities for its interconnected uh, and operation for interconnection and operation with another computers that is it is fully connected to a computer network as any other computer on the network 
it has higher resolution graphics it has a multitasking operating system that is it is able to learn multiple applications at the same time lastly let's try to look at uh, what is an embedded computer an embedded computer is a computer within another device or system but is not accessed directly e.g. there are embedded computers operating within a petrol pump washes cameras and video recorders so when you get into a petrol station uh, we usually have those systems uh, that are usually used there and you'll find that within those systems we have small computers but those computers are not accessed directly so those types of computers we usually call them embedded computer because they are, usually, they are embedded uh, within those uh, specific systems so we, we are, you are going to find you're going to find these uh, computers in various um, areas uh, for instance uh, in the petrol pumps in uh, video recorders in uh, watches in cameras yeah etc classification according to purpose digital computers can be classified further according to the tasks they perform either as general purpose special purpose dedicated computers we are going to discuss each and every one of these three classifications starting with general purpose general purpose computers are designed to perform a wide variety of tasks they use specifically written instructions or programs that is stroke programs to carry out the designed processing tasks examples of these computers are a single computer can be used to process documents, perform calculations, process the payload, simulate the loading on a bridge, process insurance policies, and play games among others. So this is just but an example of uh, a general purpose uh, computer that will be used to perform general tasks that is processing documents performing calculations processing payrolls you know processing insurance yeah play games among other examples of general purpose computers are mainframe computers macro computers mini computers laptops which are mainly used in offices and schools special purpose computers a special purpose computer is designed to handle or accomplish a particular specific task only such computers cannot perform any other task except the one they were meant to do therefore the programs which are used in special purpose computers are fixed at the time of manufacture for example, in a computer network, the front end processor, which we call FEP, is only used to control the communication of information between the various workstations and the host computer. A special purpose computer is dedicated to a single task. Hence, it can perform it quickly and very efficiently. Examples of special purpose computers will include robots used in manufacturing industries, mobile phones used for communication only, calcula calculators that are used to carry out calculations, computers used in digital um, washes, computers that are used in petrol pumps, they, they are also special purpose, computers used in washing machines, an automatic pilot that is a computer dedicated to the task of operating an aircraft 
a word processor uh, which is usually a special purpose computer used in the production of office documents such as letters etc so why do we call a mobile phone a computer or why is a mobile uh, phone regarded as a computer or to be a computer so these are the reasons Mobile phones are usually electronic in nature. You find that the mobile phones will have a screen, they'll have a keypad, they'll have a memory, and they are programmable. So these are features of a computer. And because a mobile device has these features, hence it is regarded to be a computer. The last classification of computer according to purpose is dedicated a computer. So a dedicated computer is a type of computer classified according to purpose. And a dedicated computer is a general purpose computer that is committed to some processing task. Though capable of performing a variety of tasks in different application environment, The computer can be dedicated to carrying out um, word processing tasks only. So a dedicated computer is mainly a general purpose computer that is committed to some processing task, though capable of performing a variety of tasks in different environments. So it's a computer that can be able to perform different tasks uh, but we usually find it uh, doing a dedicated uh, task or a specific task for that matter. Classification according to functionality. Usually, there are two forms of data, digital data, analog data, as we have discussed before. Computers can be classified according to the type of data they can process, that is, either digital computers, analog computers, or hybrid computers. We are going to discuss the three each at a time. So let's start with digital computers. This is the most commonly used type of computer. A digital computer is a computer that operates on district data, that is digital data. It can process both numeric and alphabetic data within the computer. The operation is based on two states, on and off. All on digits, that is 1 and 0. Therefore, any data to be manipulated by a digital computer must first be converted to digital form, that is 1 or 0. The output is usually in form of numbers, alphabets, and symbols. Digital computers are usually general purpose computers, hence they are widely used in different areas for data processing. Most of the devices found at homes today are digital in nature. Digital computers are less accurate, that is may not solve all your problems since the facilities provided are generalized. Examples of uh, these computers will include a television, uh, digital washes, calculators, macro computers, just to mention but a few. So they are said to be digital because they process um, the arithmetic and logic uh, unit. So these uh, digital computers uh, they are called digital computers because they are able to handle uh, arithmetic. Uh, that, is, that is, they are able to handle uh, logic uh, operations, arithmetic uh, operations as well. Analog computers. An analog computer is a computer that operates on continuous data. 
they carry out their data processing by measuring the amount of change that occurs in physical attributes stroke quantities such as changes in electrical voltage speed calluses that is current pressure length temperature humidity etc so these computers can be able to measure uh, these various uh, uh, stuff that is current uh, pressure length temperature humidity etc an analog computer is usually a special purpose device that is dedicated to a single task for example they are used in specialized areas such as in scientific or engineering experiments military weapons controlling manufacturing manufacturing processing like monitoring and uh, regulating uh, furnace temperatures and pressures weather stations uh, where they are used to record and process physical quantities they also used uh, to control wind uh, cloud speed temperatures etc or to read uh, how the wind is moving uh, uh, cloud speeds so like the speed at which the clouds are moving uh, temperatures yeah etc so the output from analog computers is in form of smooth graphs produced by a protein pen or trace on cathode ray tube uh, from which the information can be read note analog computers usually use one characteristic that is uh, rent to give information about another physical characteristic such as uh, weight analog computers are very accurate and efficient since they are dedicated to a single task They are very fast since most of them use multiple processors. Examples of analog devices uh, will include computers that are used to control flight simulators for training pilots, the computer responds to the cockpit simulator control movements made by the pilot to physically change the environment so that the pilot feels as if uh, he were controlling an actual uh, airplane. So we are saying that uh, analog computers can be used uh, in flight uh, simulators to train uh, pilots uh, where a pilot is made to feel as if he is controlling an actual airplane. They are also used in bathroom uh, scale uh, which are used to weigh the weight of a person. Uh, they are also used in thermometers. Uh, so uh, where they are used to um, so it is used as a volume for mercury to show temperature so that's a, a thermometer the thermometer is calibrated to give an exact temperature reading so this is just another example of an, an analog computer uh, which uses uh, mercury uh, to show or to read temperature speedometer uh, is um, another example of an analog computer and in speedometer the rotation of the wheel is converted to a voltage which causes a pointer to rotate over a digital calibrated that is in uh, kilometers per hour or miles per hour a petrol pump is another example of an analog computer and a petrol pump measures the rate of flow of gasoline or petrol and converts the volume delivered to uh, readings one showing the volume and the other showing the cost a post office scale is also another uh, type of an analog computer a post office scale converts the weight of a parcel 
delivered into a charge uh, for posting. A monitor is also another type of an analog computer. So a monitor with knobs that are located in, to increase brightness uh, can also be regarded as an analog computer. Television uh, with knobs that are rotated to increase or decrease the volume can also be regarded as an analog computer. A radio with a knob that slides into slots to increase volume can also be regarded as an analog computer. The last type of computer classified according to functionality is hybrid computers. Hybrid computers are designed to process both analog and digital data. They combine both the functional capabilities of the digital and analog computers. Hybrid computers are designed by interconnecting the elements of digital computers and analog computers directly into one processor using a suitable interfacing circuit drive. Hybrid computers are more expensive. Where are these computers used? Mostly, these computers are used in intensive care unit, that is in ICU. An analog device may be used to measure the functioning of a patient's heart, temperature, and other vital signs. These measurements may then be converted into numbers and sent to a digital device which may send an immediate signal to nurses stations if any abnormal readings are detected. So in that case we have used both an analog a computer and a digital computer at the same time. So that is the classification of computers according to functionality, according to purpose, and according to size. Advantages of using computers. Computers have many advantages over other types of office and business equipment that are used for data processing functions. Some of the advantages include Computer process data faster. They are more accurate and reliable. Computers are more efficient. They also occupy very little office space. That is for the mini uh, computers and laptops. Computers help to reduce paperwork significantly. They are flexible. Uh, some computers are cheap, have made communication uh, easier, computers produce better information, computers output is usually uh, tidy and uh, tidy and error free. But even if we have all those advantages, we also find the same devices having disadvantages, which includes some computers are very costly in terms of purchase and maintenance. Two, computers can only be used in areas where there is source of power. To operate a computer, uh, one requires skills, uh, manpower is required. So for that case, if there's no manpower, if one doesn't have the skills, then he or she cannot be able to operate a computer. Hence, he or she cannot be able to carry out any task using a computer. Four, the records are usually kept in a form that is not visible or human readable, uh, which will now make it difficult to control the context of the computer's master files. A computer, like any other machine, can break down, so it will require to be maintained, and in some cases it might be expensive. Information stored in computers can easily get lost, 
so if not well uh, saved uh, it can get lost and as a result of breakdown also uh, a computer may not be able to you know get to working anymore so as a result information will be lost if there is any power interruptions you will also find that a computer may lose data a computer doesn't have its own intelligence in that case it cannot do any useful job on its own but can only work as per the set of instructions issued so you cannot uh, just rely on a computer to do everything for you so it will require your intelligence installation of computer um, causes uh, retraining or retrenchment of staff and employees so you're going to find that if you're installing new computers in your workstations you'll be required to be trained uh, on how to you know uh, operate those computers so which will attract some uh, money uh, you also find that some staff may be you know eliminated because now the computers will take up the year loads the computer technology is changing very fast such that the already the already bought computers could be made obsolete so you find that uh, in this case uh, we are saying that because of the technology uh, used if there is that computer that you bought in 1902 they might not be useful because technology is changing very fast those are the advantage disadvantages rather of computers but still we have more so which are areas where computers are used Computers are used in very many areas, but in this case, we're just going to mention the common areas where computers are used. Computers can be used in supermarkets, industries, banks, process control, hospitals, offices, in institutions, in institutions for education purposes, employment for employing um, people. So let's try to see how computers are used in these various areas, starting with supermarkets. So in supermarkets, um, supermarkets and other retail stores use computers for stock control. The stock control system keeps the record of what is in store, what has been so sold and what is out of stock. The management is automatically alerted when a particular item or items are running out of stock and need to be reordered. For calculating customer balances, for production of receipts, it can also be used as a barcode reader. How are computers used in industries? The use of computers has, has made industries more productive and efficient. They are used to monitor uh, control industrial industrial processes the industries use remote controlled devices called robots a robot is usually um, a machine uh, that works like a human being but perform tasks that are are present dangerous and tedious to be done by uh, human beings they are also used in industries for management uh, control by companies as competitive tools e.g. they are used to assist in defining new products and services so you find that uh, companies will use them uh, as a competitive tool that is to assist in defining new products and services they also help industries uh, form new relationship with suppliers and therefore enable the producers maintain a competitive edge against their competitors. They are also used for advertisement purposes which enable an industry to attract more customers. How are computers used in banks? You'll find computers uh, in banks being used uh, to manage financial transactions uh, process checks, uh, preparations of uh, payrolls, 
um, they also used to better record uh, to better store uh, records to produce electronic money transfer facilities and also for process control sorry uh, process control um, is still another area where computers are used like they are used to control processes so computers are used in production environments such as factories uh, to control uh, chemical and mechanical processes the computers are usually loaded with specialized programs and each computer is designed to do a specific job so process control uh, just to collect their is uh, yet another area uh, where uh, computers are used so it is not under the bank so uh, hospitals is also another area where you are going to find uh, computers in use and uh, mainly they will be used to keep retrieve a patient's uh, records for automatic diagnosis of diseases like cancer electro cardinogram screening and monitoring they are also used to get a cross-sectional view of the patient's body that enable physicians to properly diagnose the affected parts of the body with high levels of accuracy uh, they are also used in medical equipment such as blood pressure monitors and uh, blood analyzers they are also used, they're also used to control life supporting machines in the intensive care unit that is the ICU uh, computers are also uh, used to enable medical experts in different countries to share their expertise or labor uh, thus reducing the transportation of patients and professionals uh, just like it is happening with the uh, COVID-19 where um, uh, the Chinese uh, medical experts are sharing their expertise uh, uh, with um, um, medical experts in other different countries uh, in the aim of combating uh, the dangerous uh, virus they also used in offices you also find computers in different offices uh, where they are used for uh, receiving and sending of messages through emails a uh, production of documents uh, keeping of records just to mention but uh, a few uh, go uh, government institutions also uses uh, computers uh, where they be used to um, store keep records and improve the efficiency of work within civil service if computers were not used the large number of files in government registries would make information recovery extremely difficult computers are also used in government to produce bills and statements among other uh, tasks that can be done by a computer in a government office Computers are also widely used in education. In this case, uh, the computers will be used in teaching and learning processes. Learning and teaching using computers is referred to as computer aided learning, CAL, and computer aided teaching, CAT. Computers are used in learning institutions, that is schools and colleges, as teaching aids. So they'll help the trainers, they'll help the tutors to you know, deliver um, the training. E.g., they are used to demonstrate experiments in subjects like chemistry, physics, using a special program that can illustrate them on the screen through a process called simulation so you can be taken through how something uh, is done uh, using a computer so it will be like a demonstration uh, of how something usually happens and uh, this is what we usually call uh, simulation so mostly in uh, um, uh, these uh, uh, scientific uh, subjects They also used uh, to assist the long distance learning in universities 
usually referred to as the open university concept. They are also used in uh, education to analyze academic data. Computers are also used in aviation for training of pilots. Flight simulators are used to monitor the control movements made by the pilot, while the computer is used to physically change the environment so that the pilot feels as if he were controlling an actual aircraft. Another area where computers are used is in employment. So if um, a certain organization requires maybe to employ uh, people, you will find that the computers will be used mainly uh, maybe to advertise those employment uh, opportunities, uh, also installing those uh, um, records. If maybe the employment, uh, the, the application was done online, you will find that the computers will be used to facilitate the um, communication between the employer and uh, the employee. So the emergency of computers has provided employment opportunities to very many uh, people. So uh, they are also used, or they, 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 we can also try to look at them uh, in terms of uh, providing employment opportunities uh, to people. And now that we have uh, looked at the different or we've studied what is a computer, the different types of computers, the different types of computers. Let's try to see how we can uh, start up a computer. Before switching on a computer, make sure that all the components are properly connected and that the computer is connected to an active power source. Turn on the switch at the source of the power supply if the computer is connected to a constant voltage stabilizer or an uh, UPS, that is an interrupted power supply, turn it on after switching the main supply. Turn on the switches of the system unit and the monitor. Switch on the power button on the monitor first, then followed by that of the system unit. So make sure that you follow this procedure as it is read out here otherwise you may be having problems when starting your computer after the power is on the computer automatically goes through a process called booting so what's booting this is a term used to describe the starting up of a computer is the entire process that makes the computer ready for use types of booting so we usually have two types of booting uh, that's cold booting and warm booting. So what's warm booting? Warm booting which usually happens when a computer that was originally on is forced to restart by pressing the restart button on the system unit or by pressing a combination of these keys control plus alt plus delete. In window operating system, one can use the restart option on the shut dialog box to perform warm booting. So, uh, in Windows operating system, one can use the restart option on the shutdown uh, dialog box to perform warm booting. When power is switched on, usually the computer starts by checking all its components to determine uh, whether they are available for use and whether they are functional correctly or they are functioning correctly. It, it does this by executing a small program called the power on self test that is post that is permanently stored in a memory we call read only memory or low. POST usually prepares the computer for use by instructing it to perform a number of diagnostics, uh, diagnostic tests which uh, when booting up. It instructs the computer to check the memory that is uh, RAM, pre random access memory, to make sure it is operating correctly. 
it usually uh, also check something that we call C MOS that is complementary met oxide semiconductor it also checks another uh, device that we call uh, BIOS that is basic input output system it also checks the hard disk controllers floppy drive uh, controllers and the keyboard among others during this process some monitors display information showing the status of each device being tested if a problem is found uh, in this case uh, when starting the computer uh, in a case one of the devices is faulty or missing the process will halt and display an appropriate error message on the screen indicating to the user where the problem is located so what i'm saying in this case is uh, if in any case a device is missing or faulty uh, a message will be displayed on your screen telling you about that specific error sometimes an error code is displayed with the message all an abnormal number of beams are sounded so if you start a computer and then uh, you hear some you know beams or some you know sound uh, usually uh, that is an indicator of a certain error and uh, the how those beams uh, or how the sound uh, will occur uh, usually indicate uh, different types of errors the special program that directs the post process is called the basic output system so we have this uh, special program that will now direct the power on self test uh, that will test uh, that all the devices are ready for use so we usually call that device input output system so what's uh, now code booting code booting usually happens when a computer that uh, was originally off is switched on by pressing the power button on the system unit so the difference between code booting and warm booting is that for code booting uh, you are actually starting a computer that was off while in warm booting uh, you are just like restarting a computer that is actually on so just restarting as the name suggests shutting down a computer after finishing working with the computer the user must follow the correct procedure of shutting down the computer in order to ensure that loss of data, damage of programs and computer components does not occur. Before you do this, save all the work done on the computer and close all programs that may be currently running. Remove any storage device inserted in your computer. Usually ensure that you follow the proper shutting down procedure uh, required before switching off the computer. So uh, let me just take you through how you can uh, be able to uh, turn off a computer that is running Windows operating system. First, click the start button on the screen then select the shutdown from the list in the prompt that appears select shutdown then press the enter key on the keyboard after a few seconds the message it is now safe to turn off the computer appears on the screen switch off the system unit then the monitor note some system units switch themselves off automatically. In such a case, press the button on the monitor to turn off the screen. Then, press the button on the monitor to turn off the screen. Switch off your printer and any other output device. 
we have earlier discussed input devices and you have seen that we have two main examples of these devices we've seen that we have the keyboard and we have the mouse so I'll just take you through uh, the two the keyboard and the mouse so we'll be discussing about the various uh, parts uh, of these uh, two input devices on your screen you can see that we have the keyboard layout and uh, you'll find that a keyboard uh, will have as we've seen before uh, various keys that are used to perform uh, different or various uh, tasks so we have from uh, left the escape keys or the escape key we have the functional keys that is the ones that have uh, F that is the ones that are labeled F1 to F12 so we usually call them functional keys or command keys uh, they are mainly used for shortcuts we have alphanumerical keys uh, that is uh, the letters A to Z we have numerical keypad on the right uh, we also have the cursor movement and editing keys so the ones that have arrows we have special uh, PC keys that is the alt, uh, the shift, uh, the control, the alt uh, we have the space bar, it's the biggest key, then you also have the allo keys. So for a detailed um, keyboard layout, I'll share uh, these notes with you so that you're able to go through that. Mouse. A mouse is usually a pointing device that enables uh, the user to issue instructions to the computer by controlling a special mouse pointer displayed on the screen so on your screen you can see um, we have a picture of a mouse uh, with the various uh, parts labeled so we have the cable uh, which is used now to connect the mouse to the system unit we have the buttons the left um, uh, and the light a mouse button we have the casing and uh, of course we have the location of the roll ball so it's usually a uh, bit over there so a mouse usually consists of four parts one the casing which usually assists in holding the mouse in the hand it also has the roll the roller ball uh, the roller ball uh, somewhere below uh, here which is used to slide or move the mouse on a flat surface it also enables the cursor to move on the screen uh, we also have the sensor buttons uh, that is the left and the light uh, the right and the left there used for making selections so they will help you to click on various parts of the screen we also have the cable uh, which uh, connects the mouse to the system unit and um, how do you use this mouse to use a mouse hold it on your hand and move it across a flat surface or on top of a cable or table when you move the mouse a nano shaped pointer called the mouse pointer moves across the computer screen in the same direction the pointer is usually controlled by moving the mouse so how do you select an option or item on the screen using a mouse? Position the tip of the pointer or the cursor over the item to be selected. Press a button on the mouse to make your selection. When using uh, the mouse, observe the following rules. 1. Place the mouse on a flat, smooth surface. Gently hold the mouse with your right hand or if you use your left hand using the verb and the two rightmost fingers the idest finger should rest on the left button while the middle finger rests on the right button in our next lesson we are going to talk about the terminologies associated uh, with the use of a mouse so we will be discussing about the pointer 
about clicking, about double clicking, right clicking, shortcut menu, drag and drop, just to mention but a few. See you there.